Pleasant good morning, everyone. Um, in times of uncertainty, uncertainty, leadership matters. And so when you see others stressed all around you, leadership matters. Others may see dead ends, others may see difficulties, but leaders see opportunities. It is in Acts chapter three, we read of a story of a man who was lame all his life. And he was carried to the gate called Beautiful on a daily basis so that he can beg. And uh, when Paul passed by, he asked him, and Paul said to him, look at us. What do we, we don't have anything, but what we have, we can give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And uh, he got up and he walked and the people around, they looked and they, were, they marveled and they said, what manner of man, men are these? And Paul saw the opportunity and he addressed them. So leaders see opportunities when persons don't, in all the chaos, leaders see opportunities. Leader, leaders have a vision and leaders make those who are around them um, better, stronger. They show them the way. You are, we are joined here together and I know that God has given the wisdom so that leadership here can flourish. We know that it is God who gives wisdom and everything else is done. But we thank God for the wisdom that he gives. And there is a song that says, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I pray that this is our song this morning. If you can use anything, touch my hands, touch my feet, touch my heart, speak through me. So whatever we do here today, whatever we do in our lives, leadership matters. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we glorify you. You are God of this universe, the creator and the one who knows all things. Father, I present this group of individuals into your hands and this occasion. It is only brought into being because of you. And we know that if you are in the midst, it will be successful. So Lord, I pray that whatever is done here today, whatever presentations are made, Lord, your people, the children of this, of, of this nation, the people of this nation, St. Lucia, will benefit and that your name will be glorified. That others will see and we would have this opportunity to say, yes, it is God who was on our side. Thank you. And I pray that this day will be a blessing to all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Director, World Education Inc., EdTech Center, and other representatives of World Education Inc. Dr. April Jones, Chair, Department of Social Work, Tuskegee University. Dr. Keith Nurse, Principal, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Other invited guests who are joining us virtually, welcome and thank you for being here with us this morning. My name is Natalie Julie Fannis. I work here at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and it is a pleasure to be the mistress of ceremonies today for this ceremony. And we are here in this blended setting, some of us at the scenic campus, scenic Mourn campus of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, 
and others joining us virtually from other parts of the world. This is a timely two-year initiative of Saint it, it, that we are here to launch the St. Lucia Connect Ed project, funded through a grant from the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. The project is implemented by the Ministry of Education, with World Education Inc. being the lead technical implementer. Training will be provided by the South Lewis Community College with research support from Tuskegee University. All of these contributors to the digital literacy of our teachers and students are present here with us this morning and we will hear from all of them. We begin with remarks from Ms. Allison Achaweba, Director of World Education Inc. EdTech Center, headquartered in Boston. Ms. Weber? Ms. Weber, we are not yet hearing you. Can you ensure that you're not muted? Digital equity and support organizations to leverage technology to increase the reach and impact of education and social impact initiatives. We at the EdTech Center are excited to be a core partner in Connect Ed and contribute our expertise gained from partnerships and projects across the globe to our shared work ahead, including our efforts on digital inclusion and the use of technology for youth engagement, education, and employment such as mobile learning to enable out-of-school youth to earn their ninth grade equivalency in Southeast Asia, or working with vulnerable girls and young women across Sub-Saharan Africa, and efforts providing professional development to educators to integrate technology through the use of, op of digital open educational resources for which our Crowded Learning Initiative was recently awarded an innovation research grant by the US Department of Education Research Arm, the Institution of Education Sciences. Now, just this week, we launched a new project, Digital Resilience in the American Workforce, a new multi-year initiative funded by, again by the U.S. Department of Education, but this time the Office of Career Technical and Adult Education. Now, digital resilience means more than just digital skills, and it's a term coined by the Digital Us or Digital US Collective Impact Coalition that we lead. Over 25 diverse organizations and workforce organizations, as well as 15 leading corporations, came together and discussed their needs, their current and future needs for digital skills. And they defined digital resilience as having the awareness, skills, agility, and confidence to be empowered users of new technologies and adapt to changing digital skill demands. Digital resilience improves capacity to problem solve and upskill, navigate digital transformations, and be active participants in society and the economy. 
With this shared goal, our partners are now collaborating to develop detailed definitions of the, de of the digital competencies individuals need to succeed in different contexts, as well as correlated curriculum and micro badges to signal one's skills. I share this as what especially excites us about Connect Ed is that it takes a similar collective impact approach of engaging diverse stakeholders, whether educators, community organizations, employers, and especially youth in a co-design process to identify digital needs and develop strategies to address them and implement solutions collectively. As we hear later from some entrepreneurs today, let's all imagine the impact in St. Lucia or even across the broader Caribbean if together we can create a learn and work ecosystem that enables all youth to develop digital skills and the digital resilience needed to create greater opportunity for them or to become entrepreneurs themselves and create job and growth opportunities in their communities. As such, I want to thank all of our esteemed ConnectEd partners. We know we will learn so much from and with you as well as with the youth, the future leaders of St. Lucia. We also look forward to fruitful collaboration for, and further partnership opportunities with the Ministry of Education as we look to build on the St. Lucia Connect Ed initiative to continue creating a more equitable and bright digital world. Thank you. So very much, Ms. Weber, for your remarks and Ms. Weber represented World Education. So we spoke about a number of partners and the other partner with us today is Tuskegee University who will be responsible for conducting research that captures best practices from the project for the purpose of replicability. And joining us now is Dr. April Jones of Tuskegee University to offer a few remarks. Dr. Jones? Good morning, and thank you for the honor and privilege to be a part of this project. Tuskegee University uh, has two co-PIs that are here with me today. They're going to tell you a little bit about their role and what they do at the university. But first, let me orient you to the Swift Growing Styles Pride Tuskegee University. We're in the USA in Alabama, where a private historically black, black college founded on July 4th, 1881 by Booger T. Washington and John Adams. Uh, we're a land grant university that has pride in uh, conducting rigorous research in support of international and domestic projects among many other things. I'm the department head of social work specializing in behavioral science and research. And um, I look forward to the action research of this project. Now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Rhonda Collier, the director of the global office. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Rhonda Collier, the director of the TU Global Office. We um, work with international projects and research in the diversity of fields. Um, my PhD and background is in um, literature and communication studies, as well as in industrial engineering. So I'm very excited to work on this project with you all and um, lend my skills in digital liter literacy and working with young people, particularly in career readiness. Um, so I'm excited to work with you and to uh, provide research support and training, and I'll pass over to our other co-PI, co Ms. Andrea Imafadin, um, also with Tuskegee Social Work. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am Andrea Imafadin at Tuskegee University in the Department of Social Work. I am the Director of Field Education, so I oversee my juniors and senior internships and also to my background is also in digital literacy as well. So I'm excited to be on this project and also do plenty of research and I teach computer application class. So hopefully I can lend my expertise to you all. So nice working with you all. And lastly, but not least, we have Dr. Finley who will be a consultant with this project. He's a retired professor of education, expert in the research area that we will uh, research in. And uh, he is also a native of the Caribbean island. So uh, we are well, proud to have him with our team as well. So I'll put our website in the uh, chat. So if you wanna learn more about Tuskegee, just visit www.tuskegee.edu.
University, you all joined us. We know now we have an army behind us. So that is excellent news. And providing the training with information from Tuskegee is the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, providing training in the development of educational content. Mr. Royston Emmanuel, who is the head of our e-learning unit, and they have been doing a superb job in getting us online and with our online education. He will offer remarks on behalf of Principal Dr. Keith Nuss. Mr. Emmanuel. Good morning, everybody. Just one slight correction. We are no longer the e-learning unit. We are the e-learning academy. Um, so my goal, my task is to offer some remarks on behalf of the college and on behalf of our esteemed principal, Dr. Keith Nurse. So Dr. Nurse right now is en route to St. Lucia. And so um, he did create a video which we are having um, some issues showing right now. So I am going to just read what he has um, prepared. So let me first of all recognize the key strategic partners that have come on board to make this event and the connected project happen. Her Excellency Ambassador Linda S. Taglia Latella, I hope I got that right, Ambassador to, Ambassador to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean and the OECS. Dr. April Jones of Tuskegee University, Ms. Allison Asher Weber, Director, WEI EdTech Center, um, Mr. Janine LeBon, First Vice President, National Youth Council, Ms. Kirin Rene, who is the Curriculum Officer, um, Curriculum and Development Unit, CAMDO, Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training, Mr. Christopher Roberts, Chief of Party, St. Lucia Connected, World Education Inc. Um, so, and of course, we cannot um, forget our Honorable Minister of Education, the Honorable Sean Edwards, Minister of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training, whose support is extremely critical and says a lot about this venture. So thank you, Mr. Minister, for being here. The aims of the Connected Project are to build digital resilience and improve the quality of teaching and learning in St. Lucia by equipping educators and youth to become digital literacy leaders in their communities. This is an objective that the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College is fully supportive of and was quite keen to participate in. Indeed, we are very pleased we were, in fact, very pleased when World Education Inc. contacted the college to come on board as a partner in the bid for this project. The window of opportunity was narrow, and we worked tirelessly to meet the deadline. And of course, remember, we were in the midst of a rapid digital transformation process, which is still taking place. And of course, we were dealing with the struggles of COVID-19 and the impact that it is having on almost, and in fact, everything within our society, our economy, education, health, almost everything. So the Zafa Lewis Community College welcomes the opportunity to collaborate with Tuskegee University in enabling student action research and research capacity building in St. Lucia and beyond. We are of the firm view that a regionalized approach is critical and that the college can play a meaningful role in this regard. In many respects, we have already started the process with a number of projects throughout the, in St. Lucia and the OECS. Um, namely, we have already started um, engaging in digital education leadership training with principals in St. Lucia and with teachers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we, have already, we already have a number of teachers on board in our digital, um, our e-learning academy for educators training program. So the college, the college relishes the opportunity, right? We relish the approach being adopted, which allows for coordination and participation in the co-creation of activities with 
you our strategic partners. So lastly, on behalf of Dr. Nurse, I would like to say that the college looks forward to pursuing jointly a research agenda to enhance and to advance digital skills integration at the Ministry of Education and across the various communities of practice. I thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel, head of the e-learning academy at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College for representing on behalf of Dr. Keith Nurse. As the youth organization responsible for articulating the needs of young people, particularly the needed digital skills, it is only fitting that we hear from the council that represents those young people. And with us today is Mr. Ajani Lebon, who is the first vice president of the National Youth Council. And we welcome Mr. Lebon as a partner in this venture to offer a few remarks. Good day, everyone, and I'm pleased today to be representing the Sinatra National Youth Council, which considers itself a key stakeholder in this momentous initiative. Minister Honorable Sean Edwards, Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training, His Excellency Dr. Didicus Jules, Director General, Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, Dr. Hygienus Leon. President, Caribbean Development Bank, Ambassador Anton E. Edwards, St. Lucia's Ambassador to the United States, Permanent Representative to the OECS, to the OAS, sorry, Ambassador Linda S. Taglia Latella, Ambassador to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean and the OECS, other members of the Diplomatic Corps, Ms. Michelle Charles, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training, other permanent secretaries within the government of St. Lucia, Ms. Allison Asher Weber, Doc Director, World Education Inc., EdTech Center, and other representatives of World Education Inc., Dr. April Jones, Chair, Department of Social Work at Tuskegee University, Dr. Keith Nurse, Principal of South Lewis Community College, and other invited guests. The Sinusha National Youth Council, for several reasons, supports the USAID Connected project. In fact, um, if I can recall, in July of last year, when representatives of our council attended a stakeholder meeting convened by the Ministry of Education, we had communicated clearly the need to focus on digital literacy for students. There was a big push to promote digital literacy um, to support teachers and, and, um, and instructors but we found it necessary to, to advocate clearly for young people, particularly students, to understand how to utilize digital technology. So when USAID and um, World Education reached out to participate in the co-creation activity, we were more than grateful to join this event, recognizing the positive implications that this would have on the young people that we represent. So why? In 2019, the annual labor force survey recognized 31.6% of young people being unemployed. A staggering 78% of these young people attained secondary and, um, well, general secondary higher high school education. This is a lot more alarming when we consider the push now or what we consider the fourth industrial revolution, um, which will seek to digitize many of our operations and to push what we call uh, a digitalized world. Uh, Deloitte would have stated in a 2018 publication that this global revolution, this fourth industrial revolution, will greater or would cause a greater divide um, between those who are prepared and unprepared um, to basically adapt to this new world. So we consider that this increases the likelihood of many young people uh, becoming unemployed 
if instruction in classrooms is not geared towards in integrating Industry 4.0 skills into their development. What skills are we referring to? Commitment to lifelong learning, emotional intelligence, digital literacy, coding, critical thinking, data literacy, creativity and innovation, collaborative learning, and leadership. The 2020 UNESCO Global Education Monitoring Report stated nonetheless that tech can make the difference between participation and marginalization. So whilst we're also mindful that for industry 4.0 skills are necessary to equip our young people to become marketable in the workforce, there are also young people in the school system um, and the minister um, coming in, it's, I would consider it as a great focus, is to encourage digital literacy in schools to allow for students to be able to maximize the, um, the technology that is available to them. So the National Youth Council thinks it's not just about the, the introduction of tech, but the full integration um, as a tool, a developmental tool to promote student safety, to promote global citizenship, and to strengthen student capacity and also teacher capacity to understand the, hard, the hardware and the software of digital skills and digital technology. So we want young people to invent. We want young people to be the creators of the modern technology which will drive our country forward. So we want more young Keegan Patricks, we want more young Chaguan Rosaries of Optronics um, to be able to usher our country into the next world or again to be able to adapt to Industry 4.0. Another reason why we're so supportive of the USAID Connected project is its heavy focus on positive youth development. And from the onset, we understood that World Education was really focused on encouraging young St. Lucians to be seen as assets in the development of this initiative, um, and young people to be considered as assets as opposed to um, problems to be um, addressed. Interventions must be strength-based, and we understand that USAID and, of course, World Education is continuing to work to encourage the integration of young people in the project design, the planning, and the implementation. Our council sees opportunity to involve our National Students Council, which is the representatives of students across schools in St. Lucia, the integration of our district youth and sports councils, the participation of our members in the youth-led advisory board, the YLAB, and we consider this also as an opportunity to create a synergy between the national youth policy, which also has a heavy focus on positive youth development. All in all, the National Youth Council sees this as opportunity in crisis. We see it as a step forward in the development of our young people and our students. And we thank the main partners, stakeholders, funders, the project lead World education for encouraging this venture. And we look forward to seeing this re rewards in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ajani Labon. I think you represented youth very, very well in articulating those ideas. And the minister is present, and I'm sure his brain is, is going a few miles to see how he can get all that you have captured in your remarks. But I think that was excellent representation on behalf of the youth. So we have heard from several of our partners here this morning on the Connect Ed project, but what really is this project about? So to give us an overview, we invite Ms. Karine Rene, who is the Acting Curriculum Officer for Media Technology in the Curriculum and Development Unit, that is CAMDU, from the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training. Ms. Rene. Thank you, Ms. Spanis. I acknowledge the protocol list. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. St. Lucia, like the rest of the world, has been challenged due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
The youth, unfortunately, have been severely impacted and are faced with increased unemployment, a shortage of opportunities for personal and professional growth, and the digital divide has become more evident. This digital divide has hampered the education system and the youth who have fewer resources and little to no digital literacy skills are severely disadvantaged. As such, World Education Inc., in partnership with St. Lucia's Department of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and Tuskegee University has designed the St. Lucia Connect Ed program. The project is grant funded in the amount of US $1 million. World Education Inc., in conjunction with project partners and key private, public, and civic society sector agencies towards the implementation of Connect Ed St. Lucia. The St. Lucia Connect Ed program seeks to amplify the strengths and skills of youth in St. Lucia by providing opportunities in digital education from which to learn and practice leadership and life skills from self-determined pathways. The St. Lucia Connect Ed program will work towards building resilience and improving quality of education and learning in St. Lucia by equipping St. Lucian youth and educators with digital literacy skills to transform them into digital literacy leaders in their communities. The skills to be developed will include computer skills, software skills, as well as the use of technology in everyday life. At present, the education landscape does not adequately lend itself to the provision of quality instruction and meaningful learning experiences using electronic media within a virtual space. Educators and learners are still trying to find their way around using various platforms. As the country continues to undergo physical restrictions instituted in the response to the pandemic, it is clear that diversifying the means of delivering instruction is now paramount for building an education system which is modern and resilient. The goal of St. Lucia Connect Ed program, as indicated previously, is to build resilience and improve the quality of teaching and learning in St. Lucia. This goal is in direct support to USAID's Youth in Development, USAID's Education Policy, and the USAID's Digital Strategy, which focuses on, one, building youth resilience, two, building skills for youth to lead productive lives, gain employment, and positively contribute to society, and three, empowering youth to drive change in their communities. To ensure this goal is met while supporting USAID strategies, World Education Inc. will work towards the following outcomes. One, youth-led and youth-centered approach. Youth and local and regional stakeholders take leadership roles or actively participate in program design and implementation. Two, Enhancing teaching and learning. St. Lucian educators have improved teaching and learning through the use of positive youth development philosophy, philosophy and integrate digital skills into routine classroom instructions. Three, increase youth opportunities. St. Lucian youth have multiple opportunities to encourage in workforce skill development and become digital literacy leaders in schools and communities. Four, program sustainability. Partners and stakeholders collaborate to find local solutions and best practices to continue the initiative beyond the life of the project. World Education Inc. will engage youth and youth-focused stakeholders to be leaders in planning and implementing St. Lucia Connect Ed activities, giving youth opportunities to build their workforce skills while building local ownership into the program. Key to the program's success is the expansion of teacher effectiveness in integrating both digital skills and positive youth development approaches into instruction via sustainable strategies and practices that can be replicated and scaled. 
This approach will build on teacher expertise and confidence in identifying relevant evidence-based strategies that can leverage technology, demonstrate how to use EdTech tools that support these strategies, and design strategy-based activities that use these EdTech tools and result in open education resources, OERs. These resources can then be easily accessed, reused, and adapted by other teachers. Through this process of coordinated standard-aligned OERs creation, a, a growing library of resources rooted in evidence-based strategies will be developed, providing readily accessible lessons and activities that support scaling of effective instructional practices. To accomplish this, a makerspace approach to professional development will be used. Through careful integrated classroom instruction and practice, along with applied digital skill building projects, activities, and assessments, youth will have varying opportunities to build their own digital workforce skill resilience as guided by predetermined skill pathways that align to the competency framework. Additionally, St. Lucia youth will receive support in navigating above mentioned challenges by developing a diversified learning environment which is accessible to students with different needs and ability levels, focus on employability skills that will translate to post-secondary employment and education. St. Lucia Connect Ed will place youth at the center of the design and implementation of activities, giving them a voice and opportunity to develop a program that addresses their needs and focuses on building skills and knowledge they identify as important to their future. The Connect Ed Positive Youth Development Approach engage, engages youth along with their families, communities, and or government agencies, so youth are empowered to reach their full potential. This approach aims to build skills, assets, and competencies, fostering healthy relationships, strengthening the environment, and transform systems. The St. Lucia Connect Ed will strengthen relationships and opportunities for youth by, one, supporting youth at school through infusing positive youth development approaches in teaching and learning, two, empowering youth through youth-led design, quality youth engagement as digital experts and community service opportunities, three, encouraging youth with positive adult and role models through local, regional, and global platforms, Four, inspiring youth through creative EdTech makerspace process and enhance health, family life education curriculum and out of school opportunities to learn. The St. Lucia Connect Ed will also engage youth socio emotional strengths, values, and commitments. These will be achieved by one, motivating youth to learn by providing choice on how they learn and how they demonstrate their learning. Two, develop youth values in leadership, self-determination, community service, and their roles and responsibilities in a digital world, including cyber hygiene and cyber security, through opportunities for youth to participate and lead direction, development, and implementation of program activities. Three, preparing youth to interact and contribute positively to social groups and communities with strengthened decision-making, collaboration, empathy, and resilience with positive youth development programs. Four, increasing youth self-worth by building their confidence in new skills, introducing them to new potential employment opportunities, and letting their voices be heard in a piloted volunteerism community service internship program. In the first year of the program, World Education Inc. will work with the Department of Education, OECS, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, St. Lucian Youth, and other stakeholders to determine digital skills to be strengthened through the makerspace process, construct activity templates that build digital resi resilience. This will be done while providing opportunities for open educational resources creation that build digital resilience and the design of OER libraries to store and access teacher and student-offered OERs. 
World Education Inc. will also positive youth development and digital skill integration into the HFLE curriculum. Year one of the program will also include teacher professional development focused on positive youth development approaches in teaching, as well as OER creation and digital skill instructions in the classroom. Up to 50 HFLE content teachers and 20 education leaders will be trained. In year two, World Education Inc. will continue to refine Makerspace process, the OER library, and highlighted digital skills. Up to 300 teachers from across different content areas will receive the positive youth development and Makerspace training. A community service program will be piloted in two schools, offering opportunities for year 10 students to apply their digital knowledge with their communities. During both program years, Sarfa Lewis Community College and Tuskegee University will facilitate youth-led action research projects to capture the best practices of Connect Ed youth-led approach. Furthermore, all program activities will be designed with the intention of strengthening and contributing to sustainability of the Connect Ed intervention. The St. Lucia Connect Ed program believes that its St. Lucian educators and youth are supported to develop in, di in digital instructions and integrate digital inclusion with positive youth development approaches. Then St. Lucian educators and youth will build their digital resilience and gain problem solving, critical thinking, and soft skills that will help them build confidence and attain vital workplace skills needed to reach their potential, personal, academic, career, and civic potential. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Renee, for that detailed explanation of what is involved in the Connect Ed project. And you heard her go through all of the different partners and what their contributions will be, as well as detail how it will be ruled out. But we understand that the major aim of this project is really to improve digital literacy so that young people can take advantage of the opportunities provided especially in this digital economy. And what better way than for us to hear an actual success story that can really paint a picture of what is out there for our young people. And we do have young people already dabbling in there. So right now we're going to hear a testimony from the Optronics Group, represented today by Ms. Anna K. Boudou. And we go to her virtually. All right, good morning, can everybody hear me? Okay, so my name is Anna Kiburu. I'm the operations manager for Optronics, and today I'll be speaking on behalf of Keegan Patrick, one of our co-founders. Allow me to adopt the protocol that has already been established in terms of greeting everybody attending this prestigious function today. Um, our journey as a company to becoming a technological and STEM education based entity in the digital economy stemmed from our founders participation in the first global robotics challenge. At this international robotics competition, our founders, Keegan Patrick and Shagun Rosary, noticed a vast divide in the technical knowledge between themselves and the other participants. Other participants seem to have more support, more access to knowledge, and just in general, they had more um, resources available to them. These other participants were able to use AutoCAD designs and motion stimulations to aid in designing their robots, while our team, um, the FGC, St. Lucian team in 2017, used very rudimentary trial and error methods in their design process. 
after noticing this chasm between the knowledge base of the developed world and our developing countries, this sparked Optronics' core mission statement when the business was established. Our mission is to develop the STEM education curricula here in St. Lucia, and we do believe that this investment in our capable human capital can lead to the development of an industry in technology. This mission so far has led us to successfully hosting the Optronic Summer Program 2020, the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission's Python coding workshop. And most recently, we concluded the Optronics Digital Literacy Program, which focused on developing the di various digital skills of persons within the community of Brazil. A bit more about our digital literacy program. Um, we had 60, parties, 60 applicants sorry, in total when we only had 30 available slots. Majority of the applicants cited that they wanted to learn a new skill or expand their current skill set as one of the reasons for applying to the program. The other top two reasons were the COVID-19 era has pushed us into a stage where we need to be able to use technology effectively and the last reason was people wanted to improve their businesses or begin a small business. The mission so far has been a journey. We have learned a lot about the current climate in St. Lucia and what still needs to be done to get us to a point where we can transition into a thriving technological industry. We hope to continue these initiatives while scaling our commercial services of website development and rapid prototyping in the hope of seeing the birth of a new high-tech industry here in St. Lucia and the Caribbean. We thank you. Your team on the work that you have done thus far and we wish you all the best in the future and look forward to hearing even more great achievements from your organization. And I think it's so great that you are actually um, training young people as well. So you, you're um, supporting and educating. So that is great youth to youth work there. Thank you very, very much, Ms. Voodoo and Optronics. So we hear of the opportunities and we need to show gratitude to the USAID for the United States Agency for International Development, USCID, for their contribution, for their grant to seeing the success of this program. So now we invite remarks from Ambassador Linda Tagliatella, who is the ambassador to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean, and the OECS. Ambassador? Thank you. Protocol having been established, I will proceed. Good morning. It is my pleasure to be here to officially launch St. Lucia Connect Ed, supported by the United States government through the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID. This is a proud moment for us as it continues the long-standing partnership between the United States and the government and the people of St. Lucia. I am particularly pleased that this initiative continues our support of the education sector as we seek to increase young people's chances of success. In many ways, Connect Ed is well designed for these unusual times because it builds digital literacy, something we realize that we need much more of since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. The genesis for this initiative came from a dialogue between St. Lucia's ambassador to the United States Anton Edmonds and the USA. Many entities came together over the last year to create the St. Lucia Connect Ed initiative, including representatives of civil society and youth in St. Lucia. As you have heard, the St. Lucia Connect Ed activity is a two-year, $1 million initiative funded by the United States government and implemented by World Education Inc. For the United States, it represents a significant venture to strengthen the incorporation of digital tools into the education space. It is becoming increasingly evident that the success no longer hinges only on what you know, 
but how you use the evolving technological tools at your disposal. With digital systems rapidly becoming the do dominant mode of interaction for commercial, social, and economic activities, training youth in this area is now not a privilege, but a necessity. The initiative links youth and teachers with curriculum specialists to create publicly available teaching and learning resources to address digital literacy gaps. St. Lucia Connect Ed will increase teacher effectiveness and skills in using digital tools and platforms in their classroom-based and remote learning environments. The activities will also provide St. Lucia youth with opportunities in their schools and communities to enhance those skills so that they are positively engaged and can make a meaningful contribution to society. I am reminded of our robotic encoding project supporting four secondary schools with a high number of at-risk youth two years ago in St. Lucia. That project allowed students to build, customize, and program their own robots. We are pleased to recognize that the Education Ministry expanded that successful program into other schools. Similarly, the Connect Ed activity builds on our flagship education project, the Early Learners Program, which ended last year. In its four years of support to literacy across the OECS region, the program not only had a significant impact on literacy levels for young children, but ensured that the best practices for teaching reading were adopted by the ministries of education. The St. Lucia Connect Ed initiative demonstrates our continued commitment to the education sector. The partnership with the St. Lucia Ministry of Education created with the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, the St. Lucia National Youth Council, and the United States-based Tuskegee University will greatly enhance opportunities for youth and teachers on digital literacy, as well as promote the activity's sustainability. To this end, I applaud, excuse me, I applaud representatives of the Ministry of Education for dedicating resources to support this initiative. I also commend teachers for your commitment and support, which is essential to propel youth along a path of success. In this spirit, we must work together to allow them to solve real life problems by applying creativity and critical thinking, and to use these abilities to make positive changes across their schools, in their homes, and in the communities in which they live. As we look to the future, Permit me to reiterate the United States' continued commitment to improve the lives and experiences of Caribbean youth. I thank you all for the honor of being with you today and for the Ministry of Education's leadership in advancing robust partnerships to take this dynamic learning agenda forward. I wish you all the very best with this project and look forward to hearing about the many success stories that will come from this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador Tagliatella. Um, we really appreciate your contribution to St. Lucian Youth. And this is not the only project, as you said. You have been a steadfast partner, and we are really grateful for that. Uh, and it's really fitting that after we hear from the Ambassador that we move to um, one of our key policy makers in, in education. Uh, he's new at the helm of the Ministry of Education, and it is really a pleasure as Minister to warmly welcome him to our campus. I'm sure he was here previously um, as, as a student, but it is great to have him here on campus for the first time as Minister of Education. So please let me invite Honorable Sean Edwards. Edward, Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training to do our feature address. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fannis. I think featured remarks would be more appropriate and it would give a better indication of the length of my presentation as opposed to feature address. Let me adopt the protocol that, the protocol that has already been established and say that I grew up in an era where the comparative of a Google inquiry 
with long and painful hours flipping through the index of a volume of encyclopedias. In that time, too, we embraced the adage, slow and steady wins the race. Our ultra-modern world and the needs of Generation Alpha, though it still calls for an attitude of persistence, consistency, and diligence, requires our country to pick up the pace. In other words, we have to move more diligently and more quickly in the conduct of our affairs. The last census in St. Lucia revealed that 23%, almost one quarter, of households in St. Lucia owned at least one smart device. We are awaiting the next census, which is due to commence, to commence sorry, in early 2022. We need to continue bridging the digital divide in this country, and not only on a community level, but across sectors. And it is my pleasure to report today that bridging the digital divide and making technology education a priority in this country is something that this administration that I happen to be a part of will be pushing and will be allocating resources to ensure that it becomes one of the most successful programs, not just in the remit of the Ministry of Education, but throughout the entire government. The government of St. Lucia is committed to making devices available to students and the citizenry at large. You cannot seriously accomplish any objective in creating digital citizens without the citizenry themselves having access to devices. And let me say that it is not enough to just have a device at your disposal, but what you are able to leverage, what you are able to accomplish by having a device is what will determine whether we are making significant strides and taking our rightful places on the global stage. As we speak, the government is in the process of procuring almost 4,000 laptop computers that will be made available in the first instance to the students in Form 1 and also second formers in our secondary school system. There was a time in our history when a child walked into a school carrying a laptop or a smart device. A teacher could have almost immediately determined the socio-economic background of that child. And there were instances that have been reported and well-documented where students entered the classroom or ventured on the school compound with a laptop computer and teachers stood in amazement, wondering when would they have such devices of their own. But in the year 2021, it is an imperative for every child in the school system to have a smart device. And the role of technology in education delivery is well documented and has been established. It is no longer a luxury item, but it, in, it, it is a critical instructional aid. It is a repository of information. And even in the home setting, after you have given a device to a child and the child takes that device home, more often than not, such a device is what keeps the family in St. Lucia connected to relatives, in some cases mothers and grandparents in the diaspora. So we are already seeing a demonstration of the relevance of having digitally um, savvy citizens um, in this country. And there's no better place to start than in the school system. The point has been made time and again that we are not a country rich in terms of mineral resources and things of that sort. But St. Lucia has demonstrated over the years and for many decades now that our intellect and our human capacity can not be matched by a lot of countries that are much bigger, both in terms of demographics and, and, and geography. And so we are the country that has provided the world with two Nobel laureates. 
our capacity to think, our capacity to explore, and our capacity to achieve on the global stage, as I said, is well documented. And as the world continues to embrace technology as a vehicle for human advancement, I want to give the most solemn of assurances that the government of St. Lucia will spend no effort in ensuring that adequate resources are allocated so that our students, and by extension, the citizens of this country, will be prepared to take the rightful places, not just in terms of the different facets of national development, but on the regional stage and in the global community. So once again, on behalf of the Honorable Prime Minister, Philip J. Pierre, let me thank all the stakeholders who have contributed in one way or another to the success of this program um, that we are launching here today. And let me say to you that in an environment where resources can be extremely scarce, we are extremely grateful, in particular to USAID, who has pledged US $1 million towards this venture. Those other collaborated agencies that were not able to make financial contributions, the expertise that you lend and you provide um, are equally appreciated by the Ministry of Education and by extension, the government of St. Lucia. And it is my sincere wish and hope that we continue to deepen those relationships that have been forged. And in some instances, we would even go beyond the relationships that exist um, in forging new ones so that we can be in a better position to deliver our mandate to the children of St. Lucia and by extension, the citizens of this country. I want to thank you very much and best wishes to everybody who is part of this initiative. Mr. Minister, for your feature remarks. Um, we are happy to hear the direction in which the government is going and the pledge that they have made to the young people of our nation and by extension, the citizens. So we have essentially um, heard from all of our partners, our implementers for the launch here of the St. Lucia Connect Ed project. And of course, in all things, we must give thanks. So we invite Mr. Christopher Roberts who is the Chief of Party, St. Lucia Connected World Education, Inc., to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Farnes. Good morning to everyone. Uh, adopting the protocols that have been established, I would like to, I have the task now of bringing the curtains down on this ceremony and acknowledging the many persons who have contributed to making this event the success that it was, and in so doing, providing the St. Lucia Connect, Connect Ed project with the launch pad that it needs to set forth on this very exciting two-year journey. I want to start off first by thanking our Minister of Education, the Honorable Sean Edward, for gracing us with his presence and for providing assurances of his government's commitment to making significant investments in the education sector. It is clear that this intervention is timely as it not only responds to the challenges of online learning in this current time of pandemic, but addresses the need for building digital literacy to ensure that our young people can take advantage of the opportunities that are presented by a new and emerging digital economy. I want to assure Minister that as Chief of Party for the St. Lucia Connected Project, my team and I will spare no effort to ensure that the project delivers outcomes that have a positive impact on St. Lucia's education sector. I would like to thank Her Excellency, uh, Ambassador Linda Tagliatera, for her participation in this event and for her commitment to supporting and sustaining this initiative. This project would not have been possible without the grant support provided by the government and people of the United States of America. For this, we are grateful. We are thankful too for the technical support provided by USAID and I would like to take this opportunity to single out Mr. Mansfield Blackwood the Partner Country Systems Advisor, his predecessor, Ms. Simone Brown, 
and his team who have all been extremely responsive in providing us with the necessary support and technical guidance in both the co-creation and startup phases of this project. We are grateful too for the groundwork done by the St. Lucia mission to successfully land this opportunity. I would therefore like to use this platform to thank His Excellency Ambassador Anton Edmonds for championing this initiative and for his perseverance in seeing this project opportunity brought to fruition. As a critical partner and primary beneficiary under this initiative, the Ministry of Education has provided us with sterling support. I would like to thank the Permanent Secretary, Ms. Michelle Charles, for her leadership and guidance. I would also like to make very special mention of the Director of Innovation within the Ministry, Ms. Linnell Malzer, uh, who, who is our, or who was our planning focal point for this project and worked closely with us. Uh, we appreciate her diligence and very great attention to detail. I would like to express appreciation as well to Ms. Karen Karine Rene for providing us with a, a very great overview of the project's aims and objectives. Karine will be working very closely with us as the ministry's focal point on this project. Uh, earlier on in the program, we had uh, Mr. Ezra Joseph, the principal of the Debarra Combined School, uh, so ably leading us in prayer and showering blessings upon our ceremony. And for this, I would like to uh, say a warm thank you. And as for our project partners, uh, the National Youth Council, represented by Mr. Ajani Lebon, thank you for your support and we look forward to working with you and your youth organizations in implementing a project that is youth-centered, youth-focused, and youth-driven. And we hope that this project will be a catalyst for creating many more success stories as the one that we heard today from Optronics. I would like to thank Dr. April Jones and her colleagues of Tuskegee University for taking the time to address us. We are two hours ahead of you in Alabama, so I do appreciate the sacrifice that you have made to be up early uh, to participate in this launch. We look forward to working along with your team as it relates to the training and research components of this project. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Keith Nurse and his team at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College for the generous offering of their conference facilities to host this event. When approached, there was no hesitation on the part of the college to support us. I am grateful for the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College team of Ms. Tracy George, Mr. Dahan Charles, uh, all those who worked in the background, and of course, our very capable mistress of ceremonies today, Mrs. Natalie Julie Fannis. The commitment and zeal augurs well for collaboration of the college on this project. And it would be remiss of me uh, to not acknowledge the hard work and dedication of my World Education team members who worked diligently to make this event a success. And I want to single out Ms. Sasha Harris, our technical advisor and education manager, Ms. Bertha Isidore, finance and administrative manager, and this local team has been supported by our extended team at head office, Ms. Michaela Tobin, Barbara Bukis, and Jeff Gomas. A special thank you as well to our World Education EdTech Center Director, Ms. Alison Asher Weber, for her presence and very important and stirring remarks. I would like to thank the members of the media for turning up today and by their presence bringing visibility to this auspicious event. And uh, finally, I would like to close off by thanking all of those who have taken the time to join us and to be present at our launch ceremony. We look forward to engaging with you in the coming weeks as we get, begin this important work of creating digital resilience amongst our St. Lucian youth. With that, I, I thank you.
Thank you so much, Mr. Roberts, for closing us off with the vote of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. We thank those of you who joined us virtually for your very positive comments in the chat that I am sure we'll pay some attention to very, very shortly. It is Friday, so we ask you to enjoy the rest of the day and the weekend and continue to observe the protocols and stay safe wherever you are. Good day.